In your investing portfolio, overall, how many ETFs versus how many stocks should you have? And maybe what's the percentage of each of those in the most optimal portfolio? I've worked with and coached hundreds of people trying to figure this out, and so I'm gonna give you a couple of things that I've found and what I think might be best for you. My name's Nolan Govea, and I'm an actual university professor, and before or after class, when students wanna go a little deeper and have specific questions, they usually come to my office for office hours. So I made this segment to go a little bit deeper on my thoughts in this great question. And for those of you that are newer to investing or maybe have been investing for a while and have always had a certain question and you'd like me to try and tackle it, go ahead and throw it down in the comment section below and I'll consider it for next week's office hours. Now to start, investing is very much tailored to the individual. So there's really no cookie cutter answer. I can't just say, have this many exact stocks and this many exact ETFs and you're gonna to be totally rich. Each person is investing for a specific thing, whether that be two years from now, 10 years from now, 40 years from now. It could be for retirement. It could be financial freedom before your retirement age. It could also just be to build up another source of income. And so everybody's investing needs are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna generalize a lot here on this video, but make sure that you're doing your own research like you should be with every one of my videos and every one of anybody's videos. Never take what any one person has to say. Make sure that you go deep and figure this out for yourself because anything that has to do with money, you definitely should be taking seriously. So in this investing game, there's gonna be people on one end of the spectrum and on the other end of the spectrum. Some people are gonna say only ETFs. That's the only thing you should invest in, ETFs and index funds. Then there's gonna be other people that say only individual stocks. You have more freedom, you get to pick, that's the way to go. But of all the people out in the world, I would say that that makes up a very, very small amount of actual investors on either end of that spectrum. So for the general public, for most of you, I would definitely recommend that you're gonna be doing what I'm talking about in this video. And what I'm gonna encourage is actually the way that I invest personally. So I'm just telling you what I'm actually doing. So before I tell you how many ETFs and how many individual stocks, we have to get on the same page as to why we even need to figure out a certain number. And to me, there's really only a couple of reasons. And those reasons are diversification and stress. So first of all, with diversification, the idea here is that you just don't wanna put all of your money in one place. And I think most of you that are investing definitely understand this subject. The problem is that sometimes you don't know that you're actually putting your money in the exact same place. And so while you think you have a balanced portfolio, you might be putting money into the same exact category. And so now you're building up one category more than the others. So for example, if you wanted to have 25% of your money into a category so that it's not overlapping one another, you might think you're pretty safe just picking four ETFs. So you may wanna put money into something that's like high dividends. So maybe something like SCHD, and then you've heard a lot of good things about this S&P 500 thing, so you're gonna put money in VU. Then you've heard that you might want like an international fund or something, so then you purchase VXUS. And then a bunch of people are talking about making sure that you have money in the total US stock market, so you put money into VTI. Those all sound like four different places to put your money, but as soon as you look up the fund overlap, you'll see the S&P 500 VU and then the total US stock market VTI actually hold a lot of the the same companies and even more than that since it's market cap weighted the fund overlap on that is very very high now fund overlap isn't necessarily a negative thing it's not necessarily the end of the world just because you're putting money into something that you already have doesn't mean that that's gonna make the returns any less on either of them I've seen a lot of comments and a lot of people talking about fund overlap as if it's the end of the world and the most negative thing possible and it's only negative if you think that you're diversifying when you're really actually not and even then if you're putting money into good funds, it's really not the end of the world at all. But anyway, if you wanna be a disciplined investor, you should have money in different areas. And so if you think you're putting 25% of your money into four different categories, and then at the end of the day, you're actually only putting all of your money into three different categories, and those two 25% will actually equal a 50%, that means that you're putting 25% of your money over here, 25 over here and 50% into one. That leaves you overly risked in that middle category there. So on this channel, I definitely try to encourage you to just pick one ETF within each of the categories that you care to invest in. For me personally, I really like a foundational ETF, so I'll pick either VU or VTI. 
I like a dividend ETF and I pretty much just love SCHD, but VYM is a good one and also JEPI is becoming a, a big one in my mind too. And then another category that I really like is the growth ETF. And so in there you can have SCHG, VUG, VGT, QQQM. There's a bunch of different cool growth funds to pick, but again, I would just pick one. And then remember, you're in charge, you're the investor. So if you want a different category, go ahead and throw one in there. If you want international or bonds or something specific for you, then find the best one and plug that in. As far as your portfolio is concerned for ETFs, I think that it would be wise to have at least 70% of your portfolio made up of ETFs. That'll keep you very safe, very diversified. That'll keep risk very, very low. And I promise that's gonna give you a very solid foundation. As far as the number of ETFs, I like to recommend between one and four. I seriously think that if you just invested in one ETF forever, you'd be totally fine. If you were gonna pick just one ETF, it should be a very broad index type ETF. So something like that VU or VTI. Those of you that have been following the channel for a while know that I have a three fund portfolio that I'm very, very high on and that's what I currently invest in. And that's what I'll invest in for the next 50 years. Now, as far as individual stocks, remember before I said that there's two reasons why we should maybe limit the amount of ETFs and stocks. And one of them was diversification, which we kind of have covered with ETFs and making sure that you're not overly overlapping there. But the other one was stress. And this is stress in so many different ways. And I promise I'll connect the dots here in a second. But the total number of stocks that I think that somebody should own, individual company stocks, is between zero and 10. And I think the most optimal percentage for somebody's portfolio is between zero and 30%. So let me tell you why I include the number zero in there. Then I'll tell you about this stress idea. Then I'll circle back to let you know exactly what type of stocks you should probably have. So I include zero in there because I firmly believe that most people should just be investing in ETFs. Even the richest of the rich and just pure data will tell you that most people will not beat the market and they definitely won't beat the market consistently. And by consistently, we just mean two, three, four years at a time. Most of us are investing for longer than five years. So if we consistently see that people that make this a job, that do this for a living, can't consistently just beat the S&P 500, then why are we trying to do that. Now, for those of you that choose to have a couple of individual stock, and I'm the same way, I have a couple, even though I've read over 20 different books and seen current data from this year showing that we just can't beat the S&P 500 long-term, I still just like to own a couple companies that I like. And being a business professor, I feel like I just like the strategy of it, and I like to watch certain leadership and see how things go. But as far as stress on you and on your portfolio, if you have something like 30 different individual company stocks, you're going to have to pick and choose every single week or month or whenever it is that you invest, how much money goes into each one of these. And so for a while, you might not be putting any money into a couple of them. And you're just always going to feel stressed out to fill this bucket a little bit and then fill that bucket. And then this one needs a little bit higher. You also have to keep tabs on 30 or 40 different companies, because if that company starts to show signs of going out of business, it's not like they just give you a get out of jail free card and say, hey, you should probably take your money out. It's up to you to see these signs, take the money out and put it into something that's going to be better. So by having 10 or less companies for you to have to keep your eye on, that'll make it much more manageable and you can go much deeper on the ones that you actually care about. So a year or so ago, the market started dropping drastically like crazy and a bunch of people that I know of freaked out and they're still freaking out with all of their stocks. For me, I was so excited and as soon as I saw that drop, I bought. Then it dropped again, I bought again. Then it dropped again, I bought again. And every time I'm super happy to do so because I know for a fact everything about that company. I know why I'm investing in it. I know what they're supposed to do long term. And it's because I only really have five companies that I'm looking at. The companies that I hold are Berkshire Hathaway, Disney, Apple, Microsoft, and Alibaba. Alibaba was one that I was much higher on two or three years ago, bought a bunch then, and it is definitely tanked, but I'm not gonna sell. It's one of those ones that was a high risk, high reward type situation. 
We'll see what actually happens there. At the very least, it's a cool case study for my students. So same thing as fund overlap with the ETFs. You should look at the types of stocks that you own and you should make sure and diversify a bit. But if you actually follow what I'm saying and you have 70% ETFs and 30% of stocks or 90% ETFs and 10% stocks, your ETFs are incredibly diversified already. So if you wanted to have that little 10% of your portfolio be individual stocks and all of them are technology stocks, stocks because that's what you care about. I don't think that that's a huge problem. You've already mitigated the risk by having most of your money in ETFs. I'm going to tell you to do what Warren Buffett says to do on productivity, but do it for individual company stocks. So what I want you to do is I want you to find the 25 top stocks that you want in your portfolio. Do as much research as possible. Don't do this fast. This should take a couple months. Really, really figure out your top 25. Then I want you to order them from number one all the way to number 25 as far as the most important for you that you think would be successful in your portfolio. Then I want you to go ahead and cross out number six through 25 and just focus on those top five. That's where I would start if I was you. And after a little while, if you feel like you want to add a couple more stocks, you can. But I promise you, if you want to keep things simple and you also want to go with a proven track record, do a lot of research on figuring out those one to four ETFs, make that the bulk of your portfolio, and then maybe for fun, have a couple stocks as well. And I promise you, you won't be mad about that decision. And then watch this video here to continue that journey to financial freedom.